Oh yeah! It's exciting. It's mind pump time. Hey, uh, we're going to give away two programs today. Not one, two. That's right, two. So here's what you get after today's episode. If you leave a comment below in the first 24 hours, make it a good comment. And if we pick your comment, here's what you win. Maps hit and the No BS six-pack formula. You actually get those both for free. By the way, those are also 50% off on sale right now for everybody else. You can find them at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July special. One more thing. You don't just have to leave a comment. You also have to subscribe and turn on notifications. Do those things. Your chances of winning free stuff is so high with us. It's so amazing. We're crazy. We give away free stuff all the time. All right. Enjoy this podcast. Have you guys seen the, uh, it's like circulating. It's like a statistic, like a fact about bees. A fact about bees? Yeah, so male bees, male honeybees, I didn't know this, they die right after mating. So the life cycle basically is honey, nut, Cheerio. Cheerio. Wow. Oh, get out of here. Hey. How long have you been holding that, on to hey, that dad, dad joke? Dude, that's that so is, good, right? That's like another level dad joke right there. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad, yeah. dude. Honey, nut, and <laughs> Cheerio. How do you guys feel the podcasting without the headphones? It's kind of weird. I huh? don't know, dude. I don't know how I feel about it right now. Feel it's, free? Yeah, it's, it, it's somewhat <laughs> that, but I'm like, I'm not quite in the zone yet, dude. This, yeah. this might take a few times. Could yeah. be that and also the, the extreme heat that's in the studio. Yeah, that right? could be a factor, too, oh, yeah. My legs are so sweaty It's a little bit of a sweat box in here, so we'll see. I feel naked. I'm a little I'm a little greased up in the legs right now, so it's yeah. Did you get your good. lift this morning? I did. I worked out, but I, I was at 6.30. No oh, way yeah. I'll work out in the afternoon. Right now it's hot, dude. Yeah. It's like 90 yeah. degrees. I don't I know. know what you're going to do. What are you going to well, do? Well, I did it already. I mean, it, it was hot. I just was ended up you know, shirtless by the, the uh, half uh, the way through. In front of the wives? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, I wait till they left. Don't worry. I don't want to... <laughs> You know, put too much out there. Yeah. I, I, heard, I had to hear from Katrina. I heard you were prancing around with no shirt on yesterday. <laughs> no, he Dude, wasn't. Yeah. No, I wasn't She's prancing like, around. You know, Katrina told no. me to pick me up. Yeah, she picked me up. Yeah. She's like, hey, Justin's looking good right no, now. No, I was up in, well, in, my there, bo- in the boys' <laughs> room because it was like blazing hot. It was an inferno in there. And I'm like, Dude, this can't happen. So we're all shirtless. And then I walked out. And then, yeah, then they were there. And yeah. so, yeah. You know. Adam, you better come home. She caught me. <laughs> she caught me. I don't know how long I can last. I know. Right now. I don't want to cause issues. How about you? Are you having got one obviously you got home late yeah no i didn't get home till after midnight dude by the way too uh, uh salt lake city uh utah that that airport <laughs> yeah worst airport i've flown really yeah worst <laughs> why well it's okay i shouldn't say because i know people i think people say jfk is like one of the worst i've heard dallas airport's really rough uh but i've flown out of dallas I didn't think Mid- midway bad. used to be really bad well, you said in, midway in chicago, chicago I, I, did, I, I never liked that one there. so there's i haven't flown out of every airport or anything but this is the worst one i've ever <laughs> flown out of and it's the layout of it. Like, dude, Doug, did you, did you get my text where I said that, uh, it was uh, how long it was going to be till I left? He was, so check this out. Last night, we're leaving. We're, we both are leaving Utah. Doug's going home to San Jose, and I'm, I'm coming out here to Reno. And he was A, A22. A only goes to 25. So okay. he's A22, and I'm B5. So we're like walking together. Oh, cool. We'll just yeah. we'll hang out till then. But because we've already flown in and out of here already, I'm like, you know what? I better double check to make sure that even though you're seems like you should only be about seven away from me, which sounds like maybe 50 yards, you know? No, dude, this thing is like literally it took me 15 minute walk to get from where he was at straight 15 minutes. And they have it's the only airport where I've seen this, too, where up above it tells you like seven minutes to here, 10 minutes <laughs> to here. Yeah, because like, every, it's that big. Yeah, it's spread. You out. Might want to go from a walk to a sprint. Yeah, and yeah. oh, also it's a it's actually a, and it's a it's a connecting airport. So there's a lot of people that are going north or south from there that are, are coming from east to west. Yeah. It's a hub, so you get people that get like like me. One of my flights was delayed, and like half the planes like stressing out because they know they're landing in Utah, mm. and they know that if they have J and they're coming in at A, Look. it's going to take them 30, 45 minutes to get I, to their side. Oh I hate God. that. How when, stressful. Oh, I hate that when you when airport you it takes you like an hour to get to your rental car. Mm-hmm. I hate that. You have to yeah. take a train here, train there. So, yeah. so there were no of those, you know, those, um, they're not escalators, but they're like kind of, yeah, they they accelerate your walk. Yeah, but you know what? You know, asshole those? uses those right. <laughs> yeah. They you want to run their, through they those. They set their bags down. They it's sit to down. take a break. Yeah. And like, that's it, for speed, bro. Yeah, and then yeah. when that's the turbo lane. Yeah, exactly. So I, I ended up skipping all those because I could power walk faster than I could weave through <laughs> all the people that are doing that. So yeah. it's like, well, that sucks. So. It's like we were playing Mario Kart and yeah. you have those arrows. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. What's the airport that's got all the controversy around it? The conspiracy around it? It's in Denver. Yeah, what? It's in Denver. That? All the murals and all the stuff. The conspiracy theorists like this is a this is their haven because they think that there's some underground. Yes, um, like some it's like secret 
base or something yes. underneath it uh, as far as it's I know. It's actually kind of compelling. You guys could take an airport story and transition Bro. into conspiracy theories blows well, my mind well, right now. Because this they got the all-seeing eye <laughs> and it's like it's There's weird, weird stuff. Mural. All over the... the name of this podcast really soon. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah I know. We're, we're becoming yeah, the hub hey, for listen, it, dude. It took us like seven years to find out that Justin and I had this. I didn't thought. know that. But yeah, seriously. Like I, I went, like when I was in college, I got really in, sucked into the whole conspiracy theory stuff just because I don't know why. What, what Somebody had told me something about about like fiat currency, I think was the first thing, and I'm like, what? Oh, that's and then not I found a out about yeah, but <laughs> that's just that's just like the the introduction, I know. you know. And then you start going, but then you have to really like check yourself and be like, well, okay, like is this feasible at all? You got to really like throw away a lot of it and just look at it as pure entertainment. Well, speaking of which, uh, did you guys see? Is it McAfee? That's saying his name right? McAfee's yeah. girlfriend got interviewed. Did you see that? No, no. She's like, I talked to him. The day of, I think it was like the the morning that he supposedly committed suicide, he was ha- he was good, everything was solid. We had a plan because we were getting extradited. We knew what our strategy was going to be. Mm-hmm. She's like, he didn't kill himself. There's no way that he killed dude, himself. That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, come on, bro. That and, Ep- and Epstein, get the. Yeah, how do you reconcile here. those two very blatantly obvious ones? Come on, yeah. dude. And I don't understand why it's not like like the biggest thing on news that we're talking about where everybody is trying to control get to the, the news, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they really want you to believe. I there know. Like, like, every stuff. time, yeah, you try to explain how things really are, yeah. it's like you sound like a wackadoodle. Yeah, as soon as uh, McAfee kills himself or gets suicided, they're like, oh, uh, release the Delta variant of coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. everybody, yeah. yeah, Everybody gets scared about that real quick. Oh, uh, um, no, Man, hey, hey Doug, is your mic turned on over there today? Yes, it is. Oh, you t- hey, what did you th- what did you think of uh, Park City, Utah? I what? liked it a lot. Did you like it? Yeah, we didn't spend much time in there, but I enjoyed where we're, where we're at. Yeah. Is that like a ski town? Yeah, it's really it's the first time I've ever been in there. I've been I've been to Salt Lake City before, but I never drove up to which is only it was what a half hour or so from the forty minutes from the from the mm-hmm. city. So it's not that far of a drive, and then it's, I mean, now I would I would relate it to like a Bay Area people going up to Tahoe, right? Sure, it's kind, of, it's kind of like that, right? So, but it's even closer for them, and it's even like more epic with like ski resorts. Now, how stuff. frustrating is it when? Because I always get frustrated with this when I go other places in the U.S. and they're nice and clean, uh-huh. and then you see these gorgeous houses, and then I make the mistake of asking, like, how much? Yeah, yeah. How much is that incredibly like I that know. five thousand square foot uh, mansion over there? It's like you know? twenty punches, right? To the yeah, nuts. and they're like, oh, you know, it's four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars, something like that. <laughs> yeah, like, dude. I was actually really so. I was really surprised though by how expensive it was to be anywhere near the Park City area, though. Mm. Like, uh, I mean, it rivals these the Tahoe numbers. You know what I'm mm. saying? I was like, really? Jesus. Yeah, I did not. Okay. I would like you're like you're talking about properties mm. that that are close to some of these ski resorts. That are the price of what properties on on Lake Ta- on the lake are really yeah you hmm. start getting up for a little mine shaft thing was like five million right to four or five million for some of those little ones yeah crazy prices yeah and then I mean get up to ten now 15. what about the surrounding towns and stuff is it is it like you would find like you know like we go to San Jose we go yeah to- so now as you get further out from you know either Park City or so there's like the midway of and I don't remember all the towns names really well um, but if they're midway from Salt Lake City to Park City there's like some suburbs in between and then there you can get still and you can get some pretty like a you know a, you know what's a, a 1.3 1.5 over here you know gets us like hardly anything right a track home right yeah mm-hmm. it gets you a custom 5,000 square foot yeah. three car garage and they you know think about their all their stuff too what i love is it, because almost everybody there has an rv or a boat or something like all their garages are like the 20 foot ceiling ones oh, where yeah. you could drive an rv or a boat with a tower in it they had this one spot that uh, uh, she took us over to that was, dude, there's this, it's probably, I want to say, 50 houses or so. Um, and I'll, I'll remember, I'll get the name of, of the next time we talk, but there was it, in this gated community and it was literally a wakeboard community. So everybody had a wakeboard boat and the the, the lake in the middle of these 50 houses was this, you know, um, it was man-made, like, little... Like a finger lake. Like, yes. It just went, yeah. like, the, uh, straight... Just it, totally made for wakeboarding to pass down and back. Huh. And and everybody had uh, their own dock that had its full roof and boats elevated out of the water sitting right outside their house. And these were all, like, 6,000-square-foot houses. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, That'd I, be sick. I feel like I read an article... I was trying to find it right now. I can't, I can't find it. I feel like there was a house in Palo Alto that just sold... 
The 500 one? No, it was like tens of million dollars, tens of millions of dollars over asking. Uh, Did you guys hear about this? This wasn't Mark Mastroff's place. Right? No, it was, it, I mean, it's a nice house, but the, it was over asking. Yeah. Like tens of millions of dollars. I was trying to find the article. To, I did to hear see. about that, but yeah, that's crazy. That's it's just insane. You imagine you pull, you put your house up for sale mm. for fifteen million dollars, and someone's like, "I'll take it for twenty five. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. you know though. I've been talking to a lot of people since our Peter Letterman episode about yeah. like the whole because I I kind of when I first heard him talk about what does he call um, unintended savings or something. I forget what the term he used. Oh right. But basically the the consequences of COVID and being yeah. basically locked up. Especially for, people, you know, are people are traveling, money. so yeah. they're saving money. There's a lot of people and cash. since then, because I was he after he talked about it, I've been like asking more people and and I've been sharing that episode. And they're like, yeah, no, that was my husband and I. We we canceled our Paris trip this year. We had Disneyland plan with the kids, and you start doing the math on that 20, 30, 40 grand. That, sure, yeah, that you're you a little down payment on something, right? And then and maybe even more so if you're so that sa that same person too, or a couple probably goes to din dinners yeah. out a couple times a month, you know. So see, I spent more money. Did you guys spend more or less money? I spent more on junk food. Uh, I was ordering. More I food. ordered a lot from Amazon, but I don't. Think, I think I actually saved money though overall. Because I we try like our thing is going places yeah. and doing things, so yeah. we really cut that out. I'm with you. I, I saved for sure. It definitely um, more than you would have. More than I would have mm. because I, I like Justin. I I I tend to. That's like one of our favorite things to do. Katrina and I is to go some random place, stay at a hotel, find a really nice restaurant to eat at. Like I, that's like a, an awesome weekend to me. Like a two yeah. three day weekend where we do something like that. Yeah, but that also. Right. That can ding you for real quick, three, five grand, you know, oh and those add God. up. It racks over, up like crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't do that really in COVID. Dude, speaking yeah. of junk food and food, did you guys see this new approved? I'm going to pull it up right now because uh, it, it's unbelievable. It's it's one of those things. Okay. Do you guys remember? It was like two years ago and there was a medical device that was FDA approved. Oh, to suck out after. Yeah. You guys remember that, right? Inspire yeah. assist. It, yeah. It was literally a tube attached to your stomach. And the then when you eat. Medical yeah, you intervention. Basically, that's what bulimia. it was. Inspire assist. Isn't that yeah, what it was? It's basically, yeah, exactly. Medical bulimia. You basically puke it out. Right. Like, oh, this is a great breakthrough. All right. Yeah. There's a new one. You ready for this? Okay. What do we got now? Okay. A weight loss tool that uses magnets to stop people from opening their mouth. Oh, I saw. I saw. <laughs> wide enough. I saw Lane post about that. Yes. Wide enough to eat solid food has mm. been developed by scientists in order to tackle obesity. Was this invented by Dr. Evil? I, magnets. Like, okay. We're use magnets. Are these the dumbest scientists of all time? Like, yeah. you invented something to keep someone from opening their mouth? <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> I saw some How people, do we get people I saw some people trying to defend it, though, with Lane and say Dude, that it, it's for a very... Uh, small percentage of the population that have some condition specifically that they can't control and so therefore they're they just see things i mean no matter ah. how you and, and lane said the same thing that i'm sure you guys would say is just it doesn't matter it's just, they call it pac-man syndrome doesn't, yeah, doesn't yeah have you seen the picture of it no it's literally look at that it's so they attach yeah, one like end a, of the top a, yeah, I saw to the other and then it's like very powerful magnet so you can barely open your mouth so you can so only you, basically drink your calories that sounds awful dude. Yeah. and that's a that's a diet strategy that is medical this is what we're dealing with. No. This is crazy. Yeah, no, what does that do for any of the behaviors? This Nothing. is insane. Hey, speaking of that, and and Lane, I saw you tagged him on yeah, the dude. artificial sweetener thing. Yeah. I didn't read the article. What's so, so this what was done in vitro, and I know that ticks him off because it's not a human study, but it's another study showing that, and there's been a few in vitro studies showing that artificial sweeteners, the sucralose, cow. aspartame, they actually turn normal gut bacteria into, uh, they become more inflammatory and can start to attack uh, theoretically attack the gut wall so mm. cause problems now there's been several in vitro studies that show that there's some issues with uh, how these artificial sweeteners affect gut bacteria there haven't there haven't been any human studies to show this and that's his big grind mm. now I, I mean here here i mean you guys know our i mean our stance obviously is you know I, i've never had a client lose weight by switching to artificial sweeteners except for those that track everything they're competitors that's it i see tremendous value never seen an average yeah, person I but, use, but even then it's it's only when they're competing you know versus oh. when they go off track yeah. uh and they're not as dialed well I, in. I remember talking to we brought this up uh, i don't know maybe a year or two ago when i cut out the diet soda so one of the things that i noticed was that's when i, I would keep allowing it back in and because i know it's zero calories 
I go from you know one every few days oh, to yeah. one every day. Then it feels like there's two. no consequences. Yeah, exactly. Because I don't. I know there's no consequences for putting on body fat. I would justify allowing them more and more. Mm-hmm. And and you do. You crave them more. The more I yeah. drink them, the, yeah, the more I crave the cravings them. Cravings come back simply by switching over to like a, a brand like Hanson's or drinking the Ollie Pops instead that have 35 to 100 and something calories. Just them. Just knowing that. Like, is it enough for me to go like, oh, keep it at bay? Like, I'll just have one. I'm good mm-hmm. because I don't want all the extra calories from sugar. It's a like natural that. barrier. It yeah. allows you to create better behaviors. And again, in the studies show this, when people aren't like controlled, in other words, that all their calories aren't controlled, they're just allowed to live normally, which is regular life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And people switch out their regular sodas for diet sodas. They don't lose weight It's I, because they eat more food. It's just, and you have to just, it's who you're talking to. You know, and I and I think Lane attracts mostly competitor like people like yeah, that. And yep. yeah, dude, if you're using his app, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and you're tracking your food, and you're somebody who's like that, mm-hmm. then yeah, yeah then artificial sweeteners here, here and there to replace from sugar syrup on your protein pancakes or adding it into your coffee here and there, like. I don't, I don't see that as a, as a problem as much as I see using it as, as a weight loss strategy for somebody who's 100 pounds overweight, yeah. has a terrible relationship yeah. with food, and then the answer is, oh, let's stop eating drinking these sodas and move you just to diet sodas. Yep. It's like you're just yeah. putting it's a band-aid just, on. Yeah, you just see you, like cause and effect after that. You, I, I always tend to see more calories sneaking their way back in because that's, it's that's just why part you, of that whole catalyst. You have yet to find a study that's not controlled that shows weight loss. Yeah. They don't. Only the ones where they're totally controlled on what they eat show weight loss. Otherwise, it just people just don't lose weight uh, using them. They haven't solved anything. When they were first invented, you know, they were they were lauded as like the solution. Oh my gosh. Here's the solution. Now you can yeah. have something that tastes sweet with no calories. This will solve everybody's problems. It didn't solve anything. Do you guys remember they um, underestimated human who shared the old articles on the sugar? <laughs> As they were, they were advertising sugar as a fat loss. Oh, I remember that. I, yeah. I, I did. Oh, that was, was really old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those like ads. Old advertising that sugar is, is sugar to, to help lose body fat. Bro, yeah. you cannot That's believe so you cannot believe them ever. Did you guys remember the fat uh, substitute Olestra? Do you guys remember that? Oh yeah, remember, bro. I remember actually getting diarrhea from that as a kid. Know. That came out when we were in high school. Yeah, and it was in Lay's chips. Yes, and uh, they had to pull it. They pulled it like after a year. And anal I leakage to, was the number one. Side yes, <laughs> and that's oh, who, somebody you, was telling me about that the other day. I think it was my sister in law. Oh, yeah, like tore they had to my pull those up. chips off the market. Tore my gut up. Oh, I remember eating those. I was back in high school crushing chips like that. And I remember when those came out. I remember thinking, like, God, why? Do I, <laughs> this was before the news came out. I was getting the shits like, every but time. But damn, I'm losing weight. Yeah. It's working because yeah. it goes through I'm, your body. Yeah, I'm oh, shitting yeah. my pants every 20 minutes. Yeah. Like, it goes yeah, right through your body. That's little inconvenience here and there, but hey. Disgusting. Uh, anyway, uh, dude, I listened to a very controversial podcast the other day that Doug recommended to us about two weeks ago. It was, uh, what's is, what's his name, Doug? It's a Dark Horse podcast. Dark Horse, yes. And it's Brett Weinstein. Oh, it's Brett Weinstein. And he interviews a doctor and a researcher on uh, who's on the front lines of, of COVID treatments. And he talks about all of these clinical trials, and there's a lot of them. And I looked them up. After I listened to the podcast, I listened to it. And I'm like, let me see if these exist. There's a ton on a drug called ivermectin. Are you guys familiar with ivermectin? No, I've heard the name, but I'm not familiar. Yeah, I mean, I listened to part of that podcast. He also was able to go on Joe Rogan's podcast and he had the same conversation because they've already shut down a lot of these episodes that he did. Weird. Okay, so ivermectin- I saw Rob Wolf just tweet that somebody, I think it was Weinstein, just got pulled off of- uh, like his social media. This is, it's so strange to me because Shit. there's lots of these trials that have happened. There's lots of this. There's a lot of evidence. They don't have the double blind placebo controlled gold standard type trials yet, but there are lots of clinical trials. And it's an old drug. It's been around for uh, 40 years, I think. It's an anti parasitic drug. Mm-hmm. But in these trials, and other countries are using them, places in Brazil are using them, Africa is using them, places where they can't get their hands on vaccines uh, quick enough. Um, there were some areas in India, I think, that were using ivermectin, and the results apparently are remarkable. There was one in particular where there were there were frontline workers. This is according to the podcast. Okay, there were frontline workers, and they gave half of them a I think once or twice uh, a week dose of ivermectin, and then the rest they gave them nothing, and then they let them treat people with COVID to see what would happen. The people who were taking the ivermectin, zero of them got COVID. The other side, the other group, almost 50%. How, of them. how big was the control group? It, this was, uh, there were hundreds of, of doctors in this. And oh, there was hundreds. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was wondering, like, five, and it was like, well, that could be random. Yeah, the you're right. Didn't get it. No, there's a lot. There's actually quite a bit. It's really fascinating. And then the reason why they think it's not being promoted, because in other places it is, in other countries, is because, and now this is where the conspiracy part comes mm-hmm. out, 
is because in order for, again, this is on the podcast, in order for that, any drug to be approved for emergency youth, uh, emergency use authorization, which yeah. is how the vaccines got, uh, the public got to use them because they're not FDA approved, right? They got that de designation right. first, which essentially is pushing something forward because there's no other viable treatment. Mm -hmm. So it's an emergency. I know we don't have enough research, but go and push it forward because there's no. So in other words, if another viable treatment was shown, for example, ivermectin, they would not have been able to release the vaccines mm. uh, through law by emergency use authorization. Yeah, no So they think the reason why they that. shut it down yeah. oh, is wow. so that they could so do they could get the vaccine. Otherwise, if they and showed make their, make their money off of if it. they showed this wow. is a viable treatment, wow. they wouldn't have been that's according to the podcast. I thought that was really interesting and very very fascinating well what is this doug what's the, what's the stuff you got me taking right now doug gave me some stuff after listening to all this stuff i, <laughs> I don't know if i should it. say it on the show oh you can't say it oh well, I, shit. I can okay. but, doug's got doug's got me taking got some so droppers. much controversy around it it's chlorine dioxide yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a ton of you know <laughs> controversy around it and there's a lot of people that's the thing that i believe people were saying well trump was saying drink bleach but it's not bleach and there's actually a lot like of uh you know, supporting information regarding that as well. And it's a very microscopic dose that oh, people like a, are using. Like it's drops. It's a, it's a tiny drop and I mix it in a 16 ounce water. But I, I'm sure we'll hear something about that after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Adam. For that well, anyway, well, I just want to be real with the audience. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm crazy enough to try it. Adam's so, always good yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. So, Adam's I mean, a, he's a trooper, I tell you what. Yeah. You take everything I give you. I do. I trust you guys. Hey, I trust you guys. You ask yeah. after. I mean, you guys trust me with a lot of things in the business that are a big freaking deal. And I, You know what I'm saying? It's true. Yeah, so I trust you my life that's you know true. Right? so, I feel like that's right. so as, as i feel like you guys do with me kind oh, of you know? yeah i mean sometimes i feel like that's uh, that's kind of like the hey do you thing. remember that I, scene it reminds me of pumping iron remember that scene in pumping iron when uh, they're interviewing franco and arnold and they're asking he's arnold. telling him he's giving him bad advice yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's, he's interviewing arnold and i go and he goes you know franco's really good he might he says, yes yes he's very good but uh you know he takes my advice and it's not hard for me to give I him give the, wrong, him the wrong advice yeah. franco is pretty smart but franco is a child and when it comes to the day of the contest, I'm his father. He comes to me for advices. So it's not that hard for me to give him the wrong advices. <laughs> the day, the, like, I'll call him the day before and I'll tell him yeah, yeah. the wrong advices. I love such a great scene. I love that. No, but yeah. that, that podcast was very interesting. And um, it's weird how controversial... It is. I have shutting it down. Very I have strange. one that you guys will like that I just, yeah, I just, I shared money. it with you to listen to. Um, and I don't know how it popped up. And I, I actually don't listen to uh, Ben Shapiro's show. Oh, is this the one you were telling me? Yeah, okay. but Ben Shapiro and uh, Russell Brand. And normally I don't like some of Russell Brand's stuff, and so I don't really follow him he much. Sometimes he uses a hundred words when he does. five words is he enough. does. Mm -hmm. He does. He does. He definitely like. It's like so he thinks much. of himself as being very poetic in yeah. his delivery, it is, and kinda, so he likes to you know weave around. And use it's, a lot I mean, more words. It, I, in his defense, I, I mean, I actually really enjoyed the episode. I really enjoyed it mostly because of him. I enjoyed hmm. the conversation that they had, and Shapiro could be a, a prick and kind of challenging. And so it was really neat to watch Russell navigate through that, hmm. and he does so very eloquently. and And I'm sure he, he's the type of person where you either like him or you or you don't. And I I typically don't really like some of his stuff, but it actually now made me more interested in some of his content and what he's doing. He's got. Do you know he like his like full a very story, smart like guy. what he's what, what like what happened with? I don't him? know a whole bunch, but from what I do know is he was a, a drug addict, a sex addict, and yeah. he and through spiritual practice was able to help himself. Right, the twelve steps. Okay, mm -hmm. it's really the twelve steps, and he talks about that in there, like because they get into like kind of spirituality talk. Okay, and he kind of uh, and then Shapiro's kind of trying to challenge him and pigeonhole him into giving him like, well, what is your ideology, or mm -hmm. yeah. you know, what God do you follow, or what is it like? And he's he's breaking down how he thinks that the 12 step program is like universal and applies to everybody. And like, that's kind of where he gets his spirituality from. And he goes through each step. And it was, it was interesting. It was really yeah. interesting. I didn't think I would thought it was, it sucked me right in. And then I listened to the whole thing. And, and you know what I didn't know that Shapiro does, which is, is a bit annoying as a consumer. Uh, Cause again, I've, I don't think I've ever listened to a full episode. He's By the done. way, have you ever heard him? Did you ever watch the video of him singing WAP? Remember when oh, I was supposed to? No. That was the most cringe word oh, you God. Yeah, ever wet, see. A word, P word. Like, you can't say a bad word oh, in God. the whole thing. Oh, anyway, man. it's the most ridiculous thing you've Oh, seen. man. And I don't know why he looks like he's 12. That was classic. Yeah, I know he's I not mean, 12. But, you know, he does it. Louder with Crowder does it. Some of these other guys do this where they he did a whole hour, I want to say an hour and a half or so conversation with him, and then he cuts it 
and then the, you have to subscribe to the Daily Wire to get the rest oh, of that's, it. Yeah, that's, that's a new. That's, that's obnoxious. A, yeah, that's like a strategy that you're seeing a lot. Well, you're, and you're see, and you're, I, I, where I, I, I see wonder it. how well that does because I've seen that. Yeah, used I don't a know. Lot. It's a cliffhanger, right? I, yeah, yeah, what it's well, it, like, it seems to be off more popular. Although I don't obviously listen to a lot of uh, left leaning type of podcasts, uh, but the stuff that is more conservative. There's for sure they are uh, seems as though a lot of them are using the, the angle of trying to protect myself so I'm not just on right. iTunes and so let's make sure we're capturing some of these people that are actual good customers that help this business continue to keep going right the people that love me for the content so I've been you doing can take them to free. a paid platform yeah they're to. probably not going to balk over three ninety nine or whatever it is mm. a month and now he's at least owns some of his audience versus mm. on you know, the podcast, you know, we are at the mercy of Apple and at any time Apple could say, okay, we want to now charge people to use. Dude, like, I, I know a guy right. who, I mean, just speaking of these social media, and this is, this is something that you need to know if you're going to build a business because social media is a great, it's a new way to build business. It's a great way to reach people. And there's lots of opportunity, tremendous opportunity. The, the barriers to enter the market are really low. The opportunity to reach lots of people that are going to be interested in your specific product or service. So it's, it's tremendous. However, there's one major flaw and that's that you are beholden to their algorithm and if they decide to shut you down for whatever reason yeah. i know somebody who was literally generating like six figures a month in revenue facebook changed the algorithm and it went from six figures a month to three figures a month that's how big of a cha of a swing oh, it made yeah, yeah. simply because they changed the algorithm mm -hmm. overnight and then you got to hustle to figure out how to fix that i also know other people that on Instagram build their whole business and then one thing goes wrong, either they're, it gets hacked or they get shadow banned for a second, business is gone. Yeah. So the name of the game is, in my opinion, own your audience or be on lots of platforms. Um, although even being on lots of platforms right. might not protect you. I, I, I really think that's, that's old wisdom too. It's not new to, yeah. to diversify. I mean, that's, that's all you're really doing. You don't put like, all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, that's true. so you're just, I mean, just Smart. because YouTube or Instagram mm -hmm. or say whatever platform you got famous on is generating 90% of your rev revenue doesn't mean you should ignore, yeah. you know, all the other potential ways for you to right. capture an audience. Speaking of business, business uh, Viore, right? So Viore, I've been reading articles on Viore because they are, so for people who don't know, um, Viore is a company we work with. They make great athleisure wear. Exploding. Since we started working with them till now, I mean, how much have they oh, they're grown? they're on a rocket ship. How much man. have they grown? Oh, 10x? More. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're, I mean, they weren't- I know they powerhouse. Weren't even, I know they weren't even in the 100 million club as a business, and, and then I know they're in the hundreds of millions now. So yeah, they're, they're, they're crushing. Yeah. They're absolutely crushing. And He's, I love what they did, too. They were a direct consumer model first, yeah. built huge uh, audience around their lifetime guarantee on their clothes because yeah. it's so legit, yeah. and then they're, they're, they built a solid base, and then after that, then they started to go into brick and mortars, and they go now into we all get into retail. Santana Road the Hamptons. Yeah. I forgot to ask Joe about that too. If he's gotten better deals now, you know, uh, after oh, all I'm of sure this, with you COVID? know, to go back into retail, like how oh, smart they, they they grew during the whole pandemic. That's why it's yeah, so, I know it's, it's like so amazing. Is what a time to double down, right? When yeah. everybody's mm -hmm. getting scared and losing real or mm -hmm. the all, real estate, and they're or they're also going like, oh, we don't need to come in office anymore to be the company. And they're they're smart, dude. They 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 have a very small footprint, so it doesn't take very much for them to do it. They've already built such a huge loyal base online, like. Oh, I love I love that company. Yeah, so they, they he actually mentioned us in an article. He got interviewed. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, did? yeah, he did because he's um, Viore is was really smart with podcasts early on. Obviously, right? We've been working with them for a while. We were the first to work with them. We right, and it's a for in a lot of companies still don't realize this. Podcasts have a very high conversion rate. It is still untapped. It's a excellent place uh, to advertise in terms of getting creating authority. Depends on the podcast, of course. And getting you know exposure and all that stuff. So anyway, he got asked, "Can you speak more to the direct mail podcast and TV efforts you're working on?" And he says, "You know, I, I don't have any many specifics, but I can tell you that with podcasts, we're doing a lot of testing, learning, and investing. We found a lot of success with podcasts like Smartless, which has been great for us. And then we've continued to work with some of our tried and true podcast partnerships like Mind Pump. So he actually mentioned us. Uh, that's cool. In this article, awesome. what, what article was that? Who, who? This was um, let's see, it's uh, Intelliger. Uh, excuse me, eMarketer. 
mm. emarketer.com. So they talk about Yeah, because when we were talking uh, with him, I remember we were talking about, like, oh, have you been on a bunch of interviews and all this? And it was, like, less podcast interviews, more like, you know, Inc. And, oh, yeah. You know, Fortune 500, yeah, Entrepreneur Forbes Magazine. And all, Forbes, yeah, he's yeah. done. They've done all yeah, that. They're, they're just, I was like, oh, okay, you're, yeah, you're on another level. Yeah, well, for, <laughs> for, men, for men's athleisure wear, is, so when we did the grand opening and there were people coming in, they're like, yeah, this there's no competition yeah. for men's athleisure wear, for sure. The women's stuff's also... Well, then women's but, line's coming up too. Yeah. It's it's really competing with Lululemon. Yeah. So, so all right. So you guys want to hear something hilarious? Yeah. So there's a British-born influencer. So this is an English person. It's okay. making controversy right now. This is in Newsweek. How old? You know? uh, so his name is Ollie London. Okay, and they are transracial. So this English wait. <laughs> so, hold, hold on. Okay, okay. Is this the whole identify as like something that I'm? You yeah, know, y- yeah, like yes. a different race. Yes. Okay. So this person. Can we do that? Is that okay? I, I, I mean, didn't that one lady get hammered for that? Who was? Uh, yeah, I don't. So I mean, I guess right because you I can identify know. all kinds of different things. So I mean, if that's how you feel, I don't so, know. Okay, so what's, happening. So, okay, what's sorry, happening? okay, sorry. So British-born white influencer Ollie London has doubled down on their assertion that they're transracial after declaring they now identify as Korean. Wow. So London, who identifies as damn ad popped up here. Okay, who identifies as so non- a, Br- a British white guy claiming that he's Korean. No, he's Korean. Korean. Yeah, he Interesting. Identifies as Korean. Identifies as non-binary. Has faced backlash on social media over the past several days. I don't know why that just turned on. Hold on one second. Your Pornhub just popped up. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that's not what happened. <laughs> See how nervous you are there? That's not what happened. Bro. Oh god. That's Please, not what happened. Click here for more. Stop. It was a commercial. <laughs> Uh, uh, after saying on YouTube they had transitioned races and cultures after surgery to resemble their K-pop idol, so they essentially did uh, surgery to make them look oh, Korean. Well, I'm sure there's, they got the person. Oh, okay, yeah, the yeah. Person. So here, I'll give you. I'll show you the picture. I'll send this to. So this will, white this will pop up in the video. I'm going to send, send this to Andrew, our, the guy who edits us. But see. that's the, I, <laughs> that I, surgery to look Korean. I can't imagine this going well. Yeah. So. Uh, I, how does how does somebody is he is he born uh, where's he where's he live he, he's English white dude yes but I mean so he's is he does he live in England and he doesn't yeah. live in Korea no so how did he find out that he identifies well, as I think Korean. see the pop star yeah he's like, like Korean food he's like I really like this yeah. I must be Korean yeah, 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 yeah. 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 wow this is what I feel yeah, I have no idea I just yeah how did this. you how did you come out I have come no, up with that I have no idea I mean it's I your, mean I love Korean barbecue so do I yeah uh, it's, I mean, it's delicious I think these K-pop fans are like. Very uh, rabid, you know, yeah. rabid. What, I don't even know what that is. Uh, yeah, what K-pop? is K-pop? It's, it's Korean pop. Oh, oh, Justin's heavy into that. I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. It. It's huge. It's Korean pop. massive. It's Brianna's a, really. Is into that it. Like a Gangnam style type stuff? Is no, it like that? it's it's different. I mean, I I haven't really listened to yeah, it. I thought that was some uh, kind don't, of dance don't move fucking or something. Lie, Justin. <laughs> don't fucking lie, Justin. I'm doing the K. I know you and Justin be listening to this stuff all the time when Sal and I. I can't I can't tell you all the details. I I think it's more like you know boys to men type stuff. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Really? Though. Yeah. I, I, if okay. it's anything like that horse riding oh, exercise might, equipment that they have, Gangnam have you seen style. that? That's what I thought Gangnam no, style type stuff. Yeah. I don't right? think. Yeah. Again, not an expert. All right. I'm, I sh- somebody they have great fitness us, equipment in Korea. Don't worry. Don't worry. We always get Google DMs. We can, what you were telling me about a DM. Oh, the other dude, day. I got to tell you. <laughs> so we got to, we got, there's a new word, a, a phrase that I, apparently we can't use anymore. So we did a podcast, and you got mad. You were joking with us or something. We did something, and you're like, "Ah, oh, you oh, cocksuckers!" Sweet. Okay. Oh, right. Somebody sent a message to me and said that that is a a homophobic slur, so you can't say <laughs> cocksuckers. Yeah. Although, I mean, we, oh, women, women so do it funny. too. I mean, but uh, that's so so that, you're good. just calling your friend that. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, cocksuckers, homophobic. You can't say, yeah, you can't say that now. Really? Uh, yeah, so you got to say something else. So we got to okay. think of something else. No way. Remember that whole bit? You know on, me, um, I ain't flexing it. Yeah, there, there's, there's an bullshit. SNL skit. It was yeah. like all like cork soaking. And so the whole joke, right, is the cork soakers, right? Yeah, it sounds no, like cocksuckers. No. And they're all just like sorkin cokes. Or, or, no. <laughs> so, so That's corks. hilarious. Yeah, yeah, never so, fails. No. No. My uh, favorite, though, is when you were talking about the homeless guy outside the studio. I said like, bums. Yeah, dude. I was like, you can't <laughs> say that, bro. Yeah, this, <laughs> this bum wanted to wash my window. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I, I ain't got enough time in the day to like go back through my lexicon and go like, what is the not appropriate of this? That, I don't know, and man. say, because it's just, it's too tough, man. I'd rather just uh, 
Ask yeah, forgiveness. Just let later it fly on. and just figure it out. You know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. You know exactly what I mean. Uh, anyway. So I got something for right, you guys. Good. Yeah. Uh, so you probably, I don't know, you might have even known this already, Sal, but there's like this. Why would you know, but not me? Because it's it's science related. And oh, you don't believe so science. I, so. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean, guy? <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just rolling you <laughs> the bus <laughs> a little bit. Here. You, uh, you, you, you cunt sucker. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I said it different now. Sorry, Doug. Doug's over there shaking his head. Doug, I'm trying to be politically correct, okay? Yeah. We're going to piss him off more. Oh, God. It's so, science related. Yeah, you won't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> Dragon Man. It's like Dragon stuff, Man, dude, it's a skull they oh, found I in, yeah, in Asia. See, I, I knew you would know this. Yeah. You didn't hear about it's this? It's huge. It's this huge skull. I, I don't know how many hundreds of years. It, it's been around for a while that they found it, but it like it, it totally puts a wrinkle into the whole evolution of uh, of human beings it, they, like, they, alongside Homo sapien. They think it belongs to another uh, species of human. Right. Called the Denisovians? Denisovians, yeah. Denisovians. Yep. I, so wish, I wish that, uh, that super accurate carbon dating could help us out with this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey. I don't know how we could have made that mistake. Hey, what that could the... just, whoa, shook well, up everything hey. right there, huh? I love how, you know, like w w when the artist goes back and has to draw like what they look like. Yeah. Like, you have no fucking idea. Yeah. You know, and, and then the same thing with the dinosaurs. They just put feathers on them all of a sudden, yeah. you know. Hey, let's try this out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's right. put some right. glitter on there. Who well, knows? So, right, so, the skin colors and yeah. stuff like that. There's like green ones, purple ones. Apparently so. So we had Neanderthal, which is pretty established. So Neanderthals. Then we had uh, Homo sapiens, which is us. Right. And then we had Denisovians, and there were some others. Now, at some point, the Homo sapiens uh, basically mated with and killed everybody else. So we definitely banged we, we Neanderthals. We dominated. Yeah. yeah, we did because we have yeah. Neanderthal DNA in us. We can, right. we but can then actually... we eradicated the, D yeah. the Neanderthals. Yeah, so we, 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 we slept with them, but then we must yeah. have killed them all. Yeah. And then the we Denisovians... called them an Uber and we got them out of there. Yeah, yeah. Denisovians are gone, so it's just homo sapiens. So there's all these... Now, here's my question. This is to your defense, Adam. It's a different looking skull, right? So like, this can't be a homo sapien. What mm -hmm. if it was a regular dude that was just fucked up? Like, <laughs> I know, because they only found one. Yeah. It's like they're creating exactly. this whole species I've, around one hey, guy. I've seen people... Today, that I, I look at them and I go, You're like, ah. that's an interesting looking guy. Yeah, if, if yeah. he died yeah. and we found a skull, we'd be like, <laughs> well, that's a different the, species. And the skull had like the square eye socket, like it was in like huge furled brows yeah. and yeah. It, it looked pretty gnarly. It's like, and how do you know that wasn't an ape? More of an ape than it was human. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Denisovians, look it up. Denisovians. <laughs> Very interesting. Yes. I don't know any of that. Yeah, so speak, there fun speaking fact. of DNA, one more thing. This is kind of cool. So you know those these private services that you can uh, do a DNA test and they'll tell you like oh you're yeah. this percent from this you know part Which of the but you found out they sold a lot of that data off and got in trouble for that uh, uh, well if this you, is, if you trace back and this, look into that this is really interesting right uh -huh. so lots of people do this right you put your DNA and you say oh you're related to this person or this is going yeah. on or whatever kind of fascinating well anyway this guy uploaded uploaded or put it as DNA into this private was this company. the mailman guy. I don't know. What's oh, okay, keep going. Okay, Sorry. so he did Sorry. this and <laughs> gets arrested because he raped someone years ago, and they the DNA matched the DNA at the crime scene. So this Whoa. guy up put put in his DNA for one of his private services. Shut up. Gets arrested for the rape of somebody. Dude, Wait a second, if it's a private service, science. how did he get that? How did the law get that? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know, but he yeah. got arrested over it. So they're like, "Oh, thank you for your DNA. We caught you." Which wow. is kind of crazy. Crazy, right? Hell yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, it's good because of who it got, but then there's also, don't you, that doesn't make you a little nervous that you do this, like we've done those like yeah. at home blood test things right. that you send that stuff away and then now the, yeah. the Your cops- Your DNA was in a hotel. Yeah, like, bro, like, I was there of, once. That's, yeah. a little, <laughs> that's a little trippy. I've left DNA all over. I left DNA things. all over. Yeah. yeah, who knows? We can oh do. Oh my God, that's crazy. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Check this out. We got free stuff that we give away all the time. Uh, we actually have free guides. Everything from building muscle to burning body fat to becoming stronger, faster, sexier. We even have guides for personal trainers. You can find them all at mindpumpfree.com. So head over there right now. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first question is from Alberto Gonzalez 8. What's an ideal split for building muscle mass? Oh, the ideal split. You know... So here's the deal. Of course, there's always an individual variance, right? So the one you're not doing. So workouts that are, uh, you, I, I'm going to give some general answers, but of course there could be differences depending on the individual that I'm talking to. But generally speaking, this is true. Generally speaking, and if you ask strength coaches and people who train people to build muscle, a majority of them are going to tell you that a full body three day split is probably the most effective for most people. I would say. Seven out of eight people, seven to eight out of ten people, so seventy to eighty percent 
of people do better, will build more muscle, more strength, get better results, just training full body, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for most people. Other people probably do well with an upper lower split or even a push pull legs type of split. Uh, but I still like a two or three days a week of frequency per body part. I think you have to talk about why we are so pro full body though, because yes, the research and most coaches would all say that and agree, but that's just that. I, for me personally, are you going to go the pragmatism route? Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just think that there is, uh, one of the things that I, I and it didn't it took me a long time to piece that together and figure this out. It wasn't something as an early trainer. I try I trained my clients on splits just like I trained myself for most of my career. It wasn't until way later when like the light bulb went off for me. And what you find is that very few people, unless you're a excuse me, a very competitive, you know, athlete athlete where you're being super consistent or you're getting ready to get on stage, most people are going waves. They're consistent for a while, then they're inconsistent, or they do really good one week and then one week they only hit the gym once or twice. And that type of behavior, which is most people that I've been trained my entire career, they are the majority by a lot landslide by 80 plus percent. Mm -hmm. Those people do so well with a full body because they still get, they touch everything. At least if you only trained twice last week and you did full body, not a big deal, but yeah. you know where you're screwed. You did a split and you only hit back in chest yeah. and that's all you hit. And then now you, and then you have that same yep. dilemma that everybody has is, oh, I'm starting back up again. Should I start back over or where I left off? And they're constantly playing that game. Yep. Or the other thing you see is everybody skips the things that they need to work on or the things yeah. that are challenging or that are hard. Legs that's are what hard. I see the most. Yeah. yeah with it's, people, yeah, it's easy to avoid things you don't like to do quite as much. Whereas, uh, you know, the full body workouts, you basically have to get through the, the whole entire thing. And I like that it's more functional. So from, you know, from a perspective of, uh, you know, adding in uh, multiple groups that, that you're working on for that for that workout, it, it resembles more of what's going on in terms of like um, everyday life, in terms of like movement and, and, and sports specific type movement. Uh, and I know there's, you know, there's some emphasis there where I could really like spend some time on uh, getting hypertrophy in certain muscle groups groups that you're really you know setting yourself after but like working the total body has just as much effect yeah so to to add to that um let's say you want to do heavy trap bar farmer walks which are tremendous for building overall muscle and All strength. right where, where do you put that in a split right where do you put that but yeah. if you're doing full body it works just great right yeah. you want to drive the sled uh you want to do a circus press you want to do some snatches or some cleans like where do you put that on a split right but if you're doing full body it works just perfectly. Here's some other stuff too. When you work out, you send a, a muscle building signal that's pretty specific to the group that you just trained. So in other words, if I do squats, most of the signal goes to my legs to build. But there's this kind of systemic signal that happens. And when you train your whole body, that systemic signal is much louder. You get a louder overall anabolic signal mm -hmm. than you would if you trained half your body or a portion uh, of your body. So this is also why... it just tends to build more muscle in a lot of people. Also, I mean, you tend to do the most effective exercises, yeah. you know? If I'm doing legs on just one day, I'll probably end up throwing in leg extensions, leg curls, and all those other And by the way, why I like talking about all these things, or these aren't the things that come up when you talk about the research and yes. the studies. Like, they've already done this where they've compared average people, and it's, it's superior. Yes. So, for most people. So, just based off of what the results are, but there's other things that you have to factor in, and you know that if you've coached clients for a long time. If you've coached clients, yep. there's so many other factors that, that play into someone being successful other than the the routine the split that they picked or the workout program that they're yes, following yes. and a lot of that has to do with consistency and normal behaviors and i just think that when you do that and by the way like does that mean i train full body all the time no i don't train full body all the time a lot of times i do splits and i break it up and i change mm -hmm. that up all the time but then there's also times in my life when I know I'm struggling with cons cons consistency. There's other priorities going on right now. Remember when I first had Max, I knew I wasn't going to be in the gym five days, seven days a week, most weeks. I'd be lucky to hit it two or three times. And if I'm going to hit it two or three times, I'm going to do full body because I'm going to get the best bang for my buck. I also like it for this. Like if you're doing full body, you're probably doing one, maybe two exercises per body part, right? That means you're probably going to do squats for legs. You're probably going to do a bench press for chest. You're probably going to do some kind of a barbell row or a deadlift. Like you are picking the best exercises because you're only doing one or two per body mm -hmm. part. The frequency is high, right? You're you hitting can the whole perform body. it well too. Yes. And, the, and again, the frequency is high. You're hitting the whole body 
three times in the week. And you can do that with a split, too. So you can go upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, which will do the but, same thing. But it requires five, six days in the gym. Exactly. So in, in my experience, full body, for most people, builds the most muscle, gets the best results long term. Just the bottom line. Does that mean splits can't also be effective? No. You can, they could also be greatly effective. Hey, one more thing, by the way. Most strength athletes and bodybuilders train that way for years. It wasn't until the late 60s, early 70s where body, bodybuilders, especially with the, the introduction of anabolic steroids and, and the higher doses that they started using, you saw them doing these kind of higher volume workouts more specific to particular body parts. But back in the day when they were using no steroids or very low steroids uh, or low dose steroids, I should say, full body. This is what everybody did and they got the best results doing it. The next question is from May Punk. Should we be lifting to failure each set, or should we feel like we can get more reps in with each set? How can I tell if I'm lifting the right amount of weight to make progress? Oh, man. I guess we, we haven't addressed this I, in a yeah, while, I guess huh? it's been a while. It is. You know, when I was younger, um, I was under the impression that lifting the failure was essential mm -hmm. because you knew if you went to failure, you at least passed the threshold for building muscle or, or sending that signal. So going to fail, you know you hit that threshold. Not only that, there, I, and I know you were reading the same articles and shit I was reading. I mean, there was a lot of stuff to support the benefits of that, mm -hmm. to show what end up, you what would happen if you ended up training to failure, the extra benefits of doing that. Yeah. The problem with that is a lot of those that research doesn't take into account like your, how taxing it is on your central nervous system, what you do the next yeah, day or yeah. two days. How that like, affects you like multiple days afterwards. And, and then, yeah, and what that looks like over the course of three to five months because what ends up happening is, and I'm sure there's lots of teenage boys that do the same thing that I did, which is read an article like that and go like, oh, training to failure gets X percent more built more muscle because yeah. of X, Y, and Z. Okay, every session, every exercise, I'm yeah. training to failure no. using my buddy in a spotter and you're just fried all No, the, time. the truth is uh, I got the best results in my life uh, with myself and my clients almost never trained to failure. Right. In fact, if you look at some of the best strength athletes in the world, they rarely ever train to failure. You look at uh, Olympic athletes, even powerlifters rarely go to failure except for maybe uh, competitions. Bodybuilders tend to be the ones that go to failure more often, but even bodybuilders, even if you watch pro bodybuilders, they rarely go to failure. Lee Haney, one of the most winningest Mr. Olympia said, Stimulate, don't annihilate. Okay, so this is this, these are all opinions, right? And experience. What do the studies show? Studies also support this. Going to failure does not produce better results. In fact, actually starts to uh, produce uh, less results or worse results than not going to failure. So what's the right intensity? For most people, it's stopping maybe two or three reps before failure. So here's where I see the value of going to failure. Every once in a while, it's good to go to failure so that you know what it feels like. And then you know what stopping two reps short of that feels mm -hmm, like. Yeah. That's what I'll do. So I'll go to failure once every three months or six months, now, okay, this is the intensity that failure yeah, feels sort like. Sort of your barometer or whatever. That's like a, it. A gauge for you to know, okay, here's where my threshold is. But honestly, like the the, the least amount of times you're going to like expose yourself to going to failure, probably the better. Uh, I, I used it a lot with, with strength athletes and athletes in general just to kind of see, you know, if the training has been successful leading up to this point. So it's almost like you kind of build up to a point where now you're displaying uh, your true strength and finding out, okay, like how much am I capable of with this? But there's got to be like, you know, th th there's significant time after that where they need to recover and then um, go back to, you know, this this two rep shy of failure. The, the other thing that's really negative about training a failure too is it can be very detrimental to your form. Mm -hmm. So if you're like I was a kid who was always chasing that that PR or always trying to put more weight on the bar and having buddies spot him, like mm. can you can you remember? I know you have a, a vivid memory of yourself. You know, oh yeah, bitch yeah. pressing like this to get the weight up. And yeah. if you're doing that all the time, you're you're creating bad patterns, bad habits. And yes. and maybe at 20 years old, it don't bother you right now. But that's the type of shit that catches up when you're 30 and 40 yeah. years old. This is, yeah, this is ex this is mind blowing stuff that I've been teaching. You know, these kids, these high school kids, is uh, when we're going through these like compound lifts. It's like we don't want to perform a bad rep. It, it's not even worth it. Like mm -hmm. it's it's way better for you to master the technique and hone in on that and. Treat it as real practice. Every time you're doing the lift, I want you to go down and, and load until we do it right. Yes. It, so that that was something that they just were like, what? Because like every other coach wants more to just weight. keep loading, yeah, loading, loading. What, what can we do? But it's all slop. As you, like you said, you have somebody spotting them when, when they're struggling their way through it. And, and as they're doing, they're compensating the whole time, like shifting their weight to the side and, and overreaching with their arm. And, yeah. and you get terrible results. You develop an unbalanced physique. You, you increase your risk of injury. Like, I'd like to redefine failure. How about this? 
go until your form is about that's to right. break down. That's right. And I think that's important that you say that too, because when we talk about failure like that being too short, it's like be, that's like two reps short of absolute failure. But you can cut your you can cut your rep, and I think a better gauge is literally the minute that you can feel your form is about to deviate. Yes, because it's a perfect place. Yes, because most people think failure is, uh, or at least the way it's defined popularly is, I can't do another rep. That's right. Mm -hmm. No. Can you do? You can't do another with, perfect with quality. Rep. Yeah. Yes. If if the, the second you feel like you can't do another perfect rep, then you stop. Yes. And and incidentally, that probably matches up pretty closely to two reps or three reps short of failure. Yep. Next question is from Catherine Health Journey. Can you explain how too much volume is negative for hypertrophy? Why is doing more exercises or more frequency often considered negative? Yeah. You know your your body isn't. You're not building muscle. You're not you're not improving your physique or your performance or your strength in your workout. You really aren't. All that's doing is it's sending a signal to the body that says we need to adapt and get better at this so that this same stress next time is no longer a stress. And so your body, what you want is your body to get stronger and you feel better. And the next time you have to add weight, do a little harder workout so you can continue that process. If the stimulus is too hard. And, and it overwhelms your body's ability to adapt, all you're going to do is heal. All you're ever going to do is your body's ever going to just try to heal and recover. And you get stuck in this situation where you blast your body, you get sore, soreness goes away, you go back to the gym, you repeat the cycle over and over again, and you never improve because your body can only focus on healing. Before your body adapts, it heals. It needs to heal before it adapts. And if it doesn't, if, it, if you give your body too much volume, or too much intensity, or too much frequency, just too much in general, your body can't adapt. It, it's impossible. It's constantly breaking down. So the right dose will get you to the results uh, fastest. Well, Any always, more than that will get you there. You always give that great analogy on the podcast, and you haven't you haven't said it in a while, so maybe we can share it again. Is when you you know ex compare it to uh, sun tanning, like oh, if yeah. you get tan, like so it's 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 more like that than than something that oh the more I do the more results. Yes, I get. yes. You're, you're, a a tan, tan is also an adaptation process, right? Your skin is is adapting to the stress of the UV rays, and it's mm -hmm. getting darker so that it can tolerate more. Well, if you you know. If Which you is exactly what, what, exactly oh, what happens yeah. when you stimulate with muscle. Yeah. You stimulate, the body's adapting by building more muscle to be more resilient because it knows it's going to get beat up like that. You, same, you right. see the same process in building a callus, too, with, with the skin. And yes. So that's one of those things. Like, it's beneficial at a certain point because now you know it allows like you to grip the bar you know, without your, your skin getting so irritated. But there's a certain threshold where if we go too hard, it's going to rip off. And that's then, right. And then we start over and we just got to heal. That's right. So the, the gym is important. Working out is important. But you go too hard or too long or do too much, it, your body can't handle it. It's not going to adapt. And all you're doing is breaking down and healing, breaking down and healing. It's the, what is that? The breakdown recovery trap. It's like a mm -hmm. hamster wheel. I, I I know lots of people like this. It's like they never improve or oh, they improve. I was, I was this way for years. Oh, yeah. For yeah. years I trained because I, I subscribed to this idea of training to failure. And so like every workout, it need to be, I need to be crushing it more than the last workout. Mm -hmm. And so you, and it was like how, if I wasn't sore enough the next day, problem with that was I was never adapting and growing. I was, you know, I was recovering sometimes and not even all the times fully recovering. So I was hammering myself so much that I didn't even, not only did I not fully recover, I also didn't adapt and get stronger, mm -hmm. which is and, and a clear indication of this, a real easy way for someone to go like, well, how do I know is if you're not, if you're not getting stronger ever. And, and if you actually see yourself decrease in strength, yeah. really common to see that where you have all of a sudden you've been consistent for two months, three months in a row, and you're getting weaker one week. Oh, you're yeah. overdoing it. Yeah. Oh, this is a hard conversation though to have a lot of times because you, you think about the person that works so incredibly hard yeah. and, and it's, it's something that they've always done and it's worked out in every other direction. Look, and, but there's, there's a certain point where just working hard is, is not going to do it. Like you really have to be smart about your approach and, and the body it Adapts, and that's different than just beating the shit out of yes, it. Yes, hard work is very valuable, but boy, you can dig a ditch with a spoon, and you're going to be working real hard. But the guy next to you with a backhoe, he's going to get there much faster, right? So you got to do it smart too. Next question is from Jim Gadget. What are some of the fitness gimmicks still around today that need to stop? Oh, fitness gimmicks. You know what's uh, the squeam is still popular. I know. I, I was going to mention that. that. And you know what? That's one that's it. been around forever. I you know. call it a corset. Like the Renaissance age or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So here's one that uh, I remember it from early on, and it, it always cycles its way back in. 
These are these stim machines. Yeah. Electric that stims. Yeah. They'll put on their abs. And it's like, it's like doing a thousand sit ups while you're at your ooh, desk. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or now there's one that goes on your butt. And there's this, it's <laughs> funny because they'll use a girl with like a, a nice butt or whatever. And they'll uh -huh. put, it looks like a butterfly and they stick it on her butt. And she's laying on her stomach and her butt like, makes her butt do, do, do. twitch. Yeah. 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 Like, it's like I'm doing squats <laughs> for my butt. You know? No, stim machines, there's a little bit of value to preventing muscle loss yeah i see recovery i see some value there yeah but yeah. to build muscle no it's 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 a waste of money at least yeah, if, if you can't generate it yourself it, you could devalue it immediately if you could just generate that force yourself yeah. i remember i bought one because bruce lee used them so bruce the back in so that's how long uh, these things have been around right bruce yeah. lee would put them on while he was writing and his chest would do the thing and he'd talk about how it's like doing a million push-ups on, well, Bruce Lee yeah. does it. I'm going to do it. And I remember <laughs> yeah. I put them on my calves because I'm like, they're going to grow. Well, put, anything like, passive, though, I mean, in that, again, this, yeah. uh, that's an example of that, something where, oh, you could just sit in your chair or watch TV and you're going to build muscles. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. It, yeah. Anything passive we all, we all is, is just not going to work. Yeah. It, that, you know? So that's one. I uh, mean, we're not in the gyms anymore, so it's, it's hard, right? It's, it's, I mean, it's been so long since we've been in, like, a commercial gym to, like, look around and people, which I used know. to be one of my favorite things to do is go in the gym and, like, people watch. Yeah. And we haven't been able to do that in a long time. But I, I do know that the the scream thing is still a big deal. Like, that's still a possibility. That's crazy. What about the creams? The, they, these have also uh, been around yeah, forever. Yeah. That that They make you sweat, therefore help you oh, burn body sweet fat. sweat, right? That's is one that they brand. Call that? Yeah. yeah, and that you rub them on your body, and then you sweat a lot, and then it's Well, because there's it. still that association when I sweat, like, I'm getting skinny. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm getting rid of uh, whatever. Like, there might be fat that's leaking out with my sweat. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you how disgusting that would be. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, it's all slippery. It's just fat's of, coming off oh, of you. That's Gross. just that's, lard. That's you know? disgusting. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't they, work like that. But it's funny because the, a lot of these old ones cycle yeah, themselves. Yeah, they come back. Over and over. The stim machines, I swear to God, man, I saw the ads for them in the 1990s. And I see the same damn products just yeah. packaged differently. You know what we should do? Yeah. We should come up with the one that just shakes the shit out of your torso. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> that one's hilarious. We should just do that because people Andrew buy Andrew needs to post that video. Yeah. There's a great video. Of a black, it's a black and white video, too. So it's like My grandma had one. Oh, uh, yeah. Really? No I way. swear. No way. Now, she threw it away. I'm so mad because I'm like, this would have been so awesome to save. Oh, yeah. It's a relic. But literally, it stood up on a, it was like a it's scan. Like a, like a little belt that goes and around it, you. Yes, and it's a belt, and it was attached to these two arms that would move like this, and you put around your body, and yeah. you turn on, and it did, 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 and it literally just shaked yeah. Yeah. the shit out of you. Yeah. And apparently- it had, Yeah, it had a weird byproduct. Like, you became a really good salsa dancer. So <laughs> that's, that's the only thing that <laughs> came out of it. Which in turn got you yeah. lean, right? That's it. That's why it works. Yeah, so anyway. Uh, check this out. Head over to mindpumpfree.com and look at all of our free guides and free giveaways. Lots of free stuff mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. In the long term, you get all of your lows. Low energy, low mood, brain fog, or low cognitive ability. And the reason is that it's chronic. And the reason we can say yes in the short term and then eventually long term as well, you've got skin rashes, you've got headaches, you've got allergies, you've got asthma, you've got low mood, you have autoimmune, bloating, gas,